I was sick. I got myself healthy. I had so much more energy and I was like, well, everybody needs to know this. So let's call it the optimal energy summit. However, not once, I don't think there has been a single person in the world that has woken up in the morning and said, oh, I want to get more optimal energy today. <laughs> so that's the, that's the first thing is that you need to, to create something that people want and ideally something that people are, are saying in their everyday language as well. If you can tap into that plus also solve a pain point, then that is going to increase your chances of success way more. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelak. Thank you for listening to the show. I would love if you could give us your opinion on how you felt about the show, your experience that you have in regards to what we've been talking about. I am having an absolute blast, but your input is like dynamite on that explosion. So give us your input. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions, comments, concerns, give us everything you got. We love it. Thanks. I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I have with me my most amazing guest, Mitch. Mitch, thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Awesome. So give everybody the highlight of who you are and what you do for business. Yeah, sure. So I, I'm, you know, I'm from Australia, obviously. Uh, so for the last nine years now, I've been been building online education businesses. So when I first got started, I tried so many different things and failed multiple times over. But the the thing that really took off for me was producing online summits. So my first business was in the natural health space. We did a lot of great summits around fasting. Become well known for that. Then I was kind of working as an agency, doing summits and advertising for other people. And in the last two years, I we kind of just fell into the holistic pet care niche, which was a little bit underserved. And we've created this uh, the largest online education platform in that space now called Pet Summits. We've had over 200,000 people sign up for our online events and workshops over the last two years or two and a half years now. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's been a fun journey the whole time and learned many things. And I'm sure we'll dive into many of those today. <laughs> Absolutely. So talk to me, first off, summits. For those who don't know what a summit is and how it operates, let's kind of go through that so that people have an idea of what that is if they're unfamiliar with them. Yeah, absolutely. I guess the best way to describe it is that a summit is like a podcast on steroids. <laughs> it's kind of like where you would take 20 different podcast episodes and put them together around the same theme and in a single event. So that event might go for a few days. Uh, the way we structure ours is ours will typically be something like 18 to 22 speakers over four or five days. And we just try and structure it a little bit more than what you would see on a podcast. So the first day we would start with a certain topic and there might be five speakers around that certain topic as well. And then we'll change topics each day as well. So um, the Big difference with summits compared to a podcast is that it becomes, especially for newbies out there, it becomes so much easier to drive way more traffic and way more views to each video. Uh, trying to get traction on a on a podcast these days is it's kind of like the slow burn. So you have to do it consistently over time, and you build up that audience slowly. Whereas with a summit, you can drive a lot of traffic into the summit itself. And recuperate that money that you've been spending on the advertising through a premium pass or a different offer after the summit, because you're now giving people a, an opportunity to register for the summit, which th then gets them on your email list. So you're building that database, which is one of the the main um, one of the core drivers of online business is the database that we're building. So we'll do that, and uh, each interview goes for 30, 45 minutes, typically the same, and then we now own this content and we can do many things with it. So we have, we will, we still currently do a premium pass, which means people get access to the recordings for a lifetime. Plus we make sure we really add in a lot of uh, good bonuses as well. So, you know, we've had hundreds of dollars worth of discounts and deals from sponsors. Uh, we've had mini courses from other instructors that we would add into the package as well and, and create a really good offer. So that's what I love about it is it, it kind of creates a large amount of hype around this one big event and people get excited and they get engaged for a period of time. It helps you build your email database. And then you have that database to continue selling more products to, whether that's workshops, courses, sponsorships even. Uh, so yeah, does that, does that explain it 
for you. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a great ex- explanation. You said, and then we own the 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 content. Now I assume that's the royal we of <laughs> your client owns the contents. Therefore, you get to use it as marketing materials and things like that. Is that yeah, what exactly. you're referring to? Okay. Now, when, once you own that content, and I mean, the ownership part of it is an interesting thing. You know, maybe we do get contracts signed, but yeah, it's kind of a, a <laughs> gray area, probably not yeah. a fun discussion for a podcast. <laughs> exactly. But... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave the legal ramifications <laughs> out for now. Um, That's right. But yeah, just wanted to, a little bit of clarification on that for people that don't know. Um, but it does make for great content to be able to, um, promote the event and things like that. Um, yeah, you, you can use that content in many different ways once you have it, whether that's shorter clips for your YouTube, social media channels, uh, or maybe you can repurpose some of the episodes into another course as bonuses for a different course. Uh, once once you have that content, there's so many things you can do with it. Uh, actually, my my very first business, I it took me four summits to really start to take off. The first three were a miserable failure and um, I, the, but the, what actually happened in the end was we still took the, the talks that I did in the first three summits and put them into a membership like a year and a half later. So we had this content that we could put into a membership program already created. So yeah, there's always something you can do no matter what your results are. I love it. So we will get into kind of why doing summits and who they're for. But you did bring up a good point that they don't always go smoothly. <laughs> so what are some of the things that uh, people can and do do wrong in order to um, kind of create this failure and think that summits don't work? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can speak for hours on this because I've made all of the mistakes <laughs> over the years. <laughs> uh, so the the so let me give you a real life example to explain it. So the first summit that I ever did was called the Optimal Energy Summit. So the reason why is because I was sick, I got myself healthy, I had so much more energy and I was like, well, everybody needs to know this. So let's call it the Optimal Energy Summit. However, not once, I don't think there has been a single person in the world that has woken up in the morning and said, oh, I want to get more optimal energy today. <laughs> so that's the that's the first thing is that you need to, to create something that people want and ideally something that people are, are saying in their everyday language as well. If you can tap into that plus also solve a pain point, then that is going to increase your chances of success way more. I've seen uh, summits work and not work in, in every type of industry from health to parenting to language teaching to AI to business to marketing to lead generation. But the the, the big thing that really sets people apart is making sure you get that that main topic for right first. So it's so important to spend a lot of time thinking about it. And even if you wanted to test it initially, so what I now do after spending way too much of my life creating things that people don't want is before we actually launch something, we'll do a quick little test. So we might spend like $50 on Facebook ads and just test an ad to see if people are going to click on this. Are they interested? And if they are, then we can start creating the program or the or the summit. Uh, it just, it saves yourself so much time in the long run and so much pain and heartache. So uh, yeah, it's always best to, to test that way. But also if you have an audience, whether it's on socials or email, uh, ask them what they want and and work with them to help create the topic. So, you know, do they prefer A or B? And you, you'd give them a couple of different options and keep doing that over and over again until you iterate and find the topic that you want to do. So, yeah, the topic is is the big main thing. The, the second big mistake that I think I would see people make is the what draws people into an event like this are the guests. And too many people who host a summit try and make it about themselves too much uh which kind of makes sense because you're doing a lot of work and it takes a lot to put them together but you will come later so focus on the guests first they're the draw card to get people into the event and then as you start to create uh to share that great content that you've created plus you might want to do some live q a's with the audience each day that's when people start to warm up to who you are and what you're about. And then after the summit is over, that's when you can really start to, to bring them into your world and show them what you do. Uh, yeah, there's just way too many landing pages out there where they talk about having 18 speakers, but they don't show these 18 speakers and who they are and what they're going to talk about, which is crazy for me to, to see. So yeah, focus on your guests in the, in the summits as well. Nice. 
Well, and I, I've also learned, and I want to throw in there to make sure that your guests actually align with the topic that you're doing. <laughs> I had uh, Brett, Brett Wilson on at our summit, the on, ultimate online business summit. And Brett, although he's made millions of dollars for many, many companies, has not done online <laughs> marketing. So it's like, oh, okay. Well, you know, talk about whatever you want to, then you're Brett Wilson, you can do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny and uh, he still does draw a crowd, but I'd highly recommend that you make sure that <laughs> there's some alignment there, not yeah. just a name for the sake of a name. Uh, so let's get into kind of who is your either your ideal client or the the topics or who comes to you the most often for setting up their summits. Yeah, so uh, I, I mean. It's, 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 it's hard to say who, like I even, you know, I mentioned a few of them that I've worked on before from language teaching. I'm, I've been running an artist, uh, summit right now for an old client. I've even done a summit on swingers. Uh, so like, you know, the, the, there's a scope (laughs) to do a summit on basically anything. Um, well, my next question was going to be, what was the most interesting one, but I'm going to guess it was that (laughs) one. (laughs) Yeah, that was definitely the most interesting one so far. That's hilarious. So it, and that to me, it doesn't sound like it was a business even focused one. It's, it was just pure interest or do, is it usually for business that people are doing the summits? Yeah. I mean, it's a good question. All of the ones I can think of that I've worked on at least ha- have definitely had a business component. Typically there, there's two different types of people that are doing summits. So it's like the newbie who doesn't really know what they want to do yet. they kind of have some idea of the direction they want to go they're not really seen in it as an expert mm-hmm. then a summit's a really great option in that sense because you start to position yourself next to people who have way more experience and way more authority and by association then you start to collect a little bit of that authority as well and i kind of refer this to like oprah so if you really think about it oprah isn't really an expert at anything but she created the platform and curated the guests to give them an audience to speak to and by association she probably became more famous and powerful than almost all of them over time (laughs) so uh it's a it's a powerful strategy if you can do it right so that would that would be the first type of people um and it's a great way to get started trying to stand out as an expert immediately these days is so hard to do so like being the curator and bringing people together there's a there's there can be a lot of uh value and and money in doing that the if if somebody's starting, no, let's start with that one first. Keep your thought sure. <laughs> and distracting and go, what was that thought again? I'll come back to it. So create an anchor there and we're coming back to that. If somebody's just starting out in business and they're going like, how am I going to fund this thing? Do you work with them to fund it so that it's it's not just an expense that there's potentially some, uh, that it's a money, at least break even? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um uh- I should be very clear about this. So we're not really working as an agency right now. We hmm. we are so we were looking for a niche to niche into so that we could then help that one niche. And we the idea was we would be building a brand that we could one day sell. And so the the current business that we have in the pet space is we do fund all of these summits ourselves and bring on experts in the industry to be the hosts and the guests. Uh, that allows us to work on multiple projects at a time. And it also helps alleviate this question that you just asked me, which is, yes, it can be really expensive and time consuming to create an event like this if you have to do it all yourself. So we've worked out a deal with you know different experts in this space where typically um, they're not great at generating their own leads. So if we can do an online summit where 20,000 people are registered and then five or 10,000 of those people sign up for their email list throughout the summit as well. That's super valuable for them. Like if they had to do that themselves via Facebook ads, for example, that's still worth 30, 40, $50,000 to them. So yeah. uh, that's basically what we do to help this industry. And I see this, I, I think, you know, if people are out there and they have a little bit of an idea around summits, you probably know an industry that I don't where you could do this exact same thing and and go into an industry where people are not so great at marketing. They're like the expert at their thing that isn't business yep. and help them reach more people. There's a huge amount of money to be made in that space of just getting uh, leads for, for people as well. And you can build a great brand around it. 
And if you're passionate about it, then then that's a bonus as well. So yeah, we do that. And then we have some other opportunities throughout the summit and afterwards for them to generate some revenue through doing workshops and courses. And um, we'll split revenue and stuff with them in that sense. So yeah, that's kind of how we've operated. I have done the agency model in the past as well, where they would pay you know, a set fee and we would do everything. Uh, and I've actually not just owned a summit and, and had somebody else uh, run it just as a single one. If like a single running a single summit without any back end uh, products these days is it's kind of yeah. hard to do if you're going to be advertising. So yeah, I yeah. wouldn't worry about that one. So and forgive my ignorance. Just want to make sure on the accent that I'm getting this right. It's pet health is what you're yeah like animals. pets yeah animals <laughs> yeah just making sure that is a very specific niche. Like a very, very specific niche. How do you get 20,000 people out to a, well, I guess I, I may have answered my own question, but tell me more about this. Cause the whole thing is fascinating to me. Obviously there's 20,000 people out there that have pets and are concerned about the health of their pets. Is that really kind of all it is? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you've Michelle just boggled like my mind. It's a, 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 a <laughs> It's a bit mind blowing for myself as well. When we first tested it, we were very surprised. So the the backstory is we were looking for uh, a business to build in the pet space. We started selling supplements. Realized if we had to, if we wanted to scale, we'd have to raise money. At the time, it was COVID. Trying to raise money in that environment was a bit like everybody was just in chaos times. So we we didn't go down that path. Uh, we then pivoted to education again, cause that was my background and just tested it. And our first summit we did, we had, uh, seven, over 7,000 people sign up. So nice. like, okay, like people want to learn this stuff. So let's just nice. keep giving it to them. And then the second summit we did, we had about 10,000 people. And then the third summit was one around dog training. And that was like 22,000 people. So there, there is this, uh, appetite for people to want the education in holistic pet care and it's more hol holistic uh type of stuff so things that you're not really going to hear from the veterinarian diy stuff that you can do at home different herbs supplements that type of stuff mm -hmm. um and you know same with humans but humans want to learn about all of that as well because we want to we want to know things that we can do at home basically that's going to help our ourselves and and pets these days they're they're they've become family members you know so many people are having a few dogs rather than a couple of kids and um and then of course you know so many people have dogs towards the end of their life to keep them company as well which is um yeah i mean i think it's it's beautiful and it's special for for them to have that friend and and they treat them like a family member. So they want to know. Yeah. Very fun. So when it comes to the guests that you have on the show, are there any kind of, um, I would imagine with seven to 20,000 people coming to a summit, you don't have issues filling those speaking slots at all. No, no, no. not at all. <laughs> uh, we, we have inbound inquiry now for, for our speakers to join a summit or to do something with us. Uh, which is a nice place to be, but it wasn't always that way, right? When we were trying to create the first one, at least 70% of people said no and didn't want to be a part of it. And there was actually, I won't name any names, but one of the vets who was quite large, had maybe 20, 30,000 follow followers on Facebook and stuff like that. He accidentally sent a reply to our email inviting him to be on, on a summit where he thought he was replying to his assistant. And he, and he said in the email, he's like, there's no way that these guys are getting 20,000 people on a summit. I don't want to be a part of it. But little did he know we were. Well, and the one that he missed out on, we actually had 30,000 people sign up for it. You're um, right. So. We didn't have 20,000. <laughs> Bit of a missed opportunity there. <laughs> right. That's crazy. Awesome. So let's, if people are interested, if they have a, you know, they service that industry and they'd love to get a hold of you, is it a different contact then obviously then people that are interested in, in attending the summits are getting on the the list to to be informed of when the next summits are coming up yeah absolutely so i have a newsletter at mitchassa.com i'm sure i'll be in the notes somewhere yeah. and what i'm actually doing now is uh templating and automating a lot of what i do in that summer business so things like just this week, we put together a podcast automation that now does all of our podcast notes, summaries, 
uh, promotional emails, promotional social media in five minutes. And that's not an exaggeration. It, it literally takes five minutes, including the human editing time. And wow. it costs less than a dollar through the OpenAI API. So the things that we can do with automations and OpenAI API these days is mind blowing. What that five minute job that I just described used to take me six hours and a couple of hundred dollars. That so um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it, it's crazy, and and the quality is really good. Like you know, a lot of people hype up you know different programs and stuff on TikTok for AI, but the quality isn't always there. But if you can do it yourself, you can do it your own way. Um, so yeah, I'm writing about all of that. I'm documenting it. I'm sharing it for free. So if people want to follow along there, that would be the best place. Wow. So for people who want to start their own summits and, and do what you're doing, you're letting them get, get access to that information for free right now. Yeah. I'm just, uh, the, I have nice. to document that anyway for my team. So I thought, yeah. why not document it in public? And if people want to use it, then they can use it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Peeps. You, I hope you heard that loud and clear because that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and to to have that amount of content because we've I've done enough summons to know it is a ton of work in anything you can do to get rid of but that that in itself most people struggle with that you say it took you six hours you're clearly prolific in writing <laughs> marketing emails <laughs> because most people there's no way I mean I know people that would spend months if they were just left to their own device to have to come up with stuff that would be yeah. crazy that Absolutely. is awesome. Okay. Well, in a minute, I'm going to ask you about a Cinderella story of one of your clients because I like Cinderella stories. Um, before we do that, we're going to break and we'll be right back. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap. 